This is the last video in my series on the bones of the skeleton. We have finally arrived at the bones of the foot. And I again would like to acknowledge the images I'm using from Anatomy Standard. There is a link to this website in the description below. Here is a lateral view of the bones of the foot. There are seven bones in the foot that form the tarsus where you have the articulation with the tibia and fibula. The bone that forms a hinge joint with the inferior articular surface of the tibia is the talus. You can remember this is associated with the tibia by recalling that the tibia begins with a T and the talus also begins with a T. Inferior to the talus, there is the largest bone of the seven tarsal bones, the calcaneus, which in Latin simply means heel. The talus anteriorly articulates with the navicular bone. The word navicular comes from its resemblance to a little ship or boat. Navis means boat and naviculus means little boat. In a second we will see from a superior view, this resemblance. The calcaneus articulates with the cuboid bone. This name implies that the bone is shaped like a cube. If this doesn't help you to remember the name of this bone, you could remember that the calcaneus begins with a C and articulates with the cuboid, which also begins with a C. The navicular bone articulates with three bones anteriorly, which are called the cuneiforms, which means shaped like a wedge. The stem of this word is used in other anatomical locations, like the cuneus, for example, in the brain. Let's flip the foot around to a superior view and review all seven bones. Here is the smooth articular surface of the talus that forms the ankle joint. The calcaneus is underneath and forms the heel. From above, you can see why the navicular bone reminded the anatomist of a little boat. On the lateral side, you again have the cuboid. In front of the navicular and medial to the cuboid, you have the cuneiforms. The cuneiforms are named according to their relative position in the foot. So we have the lateral cuneiform, the intermediate cuneiform in the middle, and the medial cuneiform. Here again is a lateral view of the foot, which on the lateral side displays a longitudinal arch. There is another longitudinal arch on the medial side, which is higher. The cuneiforms contribute to a transverse arch. So these are the arches of the foot, a lateral and medial longitudinal arch and a transverse arch. If we look at the medial side, we can get a better view of the steeper medial longitudinal arch. Here is a view of the inferior or plantar surface of the arch. In the foot, this arch is supported by connective tissue that extends from the heel to the heads of the metatarsal bones. This connective tissue is called fascia. Here is a more diagrammatic view of this connective tissue, which is called plantar fascia, but because it is also a kind of continuation of the calcaneus tendon, it is also called the plantar aponeurosis. Here again is a lateral view, this time from a medial perspective. Note again the longitudinal arch, and here is our plantar aponeurosis, or fascia. Note that the fascia appears to act like a tie rod that supports the arch, which otherwise would tend to fall. When you put your weight on your foot, the somewhat elastic connective tissue will stretch to accommodate the force. From a biomechanical point of view, this is useful because the energy that is stored in the stretched fibers is 
potential energy that can be regained when the weight is removed and the stretched fascia recoils. If we go back to the lateral view, we can again note that along with the longitudinal arches, there is a transverse arch. If we flip the foot around again, we can look at the bones that form the arch from below. Note that the cuneiforms, particularly the lateral cuneiform, does have a wedge-like shape. This is a Roman arch, the volubilis triumphal arch. Notice that the stones that form the curving roof of the arch have a wedge-like shape, like the cuneiforms that form the transverse arch of the foot. Here again is a superior view of the foot. The bones that come after or beyond the tarsal bones are the metatarsal bones. Meta is a prefix that means after or beyond. This is similar to what we saw with the metacarpal bones of the hand. The metatarsal bones are numbered with Roman numerals, starting medially with Roman numeral number one to the lateral side with Roman numeral number five. These are long bones and the expanded proximal end is called the base and the expanded distal end is called the head with the shaft in between. Finally, there are 14 phalangeal bones in the toes. Each has three phalangeal bones, a proximal, middle, and distal phalangeal bone. The big toe, or hallux, as it is called in Latin, has only a proximal and distal phalangeal bone. Again, this is just like what is seen in the hand, with the phalangeal bones of the hand, or fingers. This brings our video to an end. Again, if you would like to take a quiz, there is a link to a quiz in the description below. This is the last of the playlist that goes over the bones of the skeleton. Here are the image attributions. And finally, here is the last cat video you'll see for a while. Uh, this is uh, somewhat long because it is the last video. And you can see that Apollo does like the faucet and that's typical i guess of cat and um, he usually finally gets his way which also is typical of cats so enjoy apollo